A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Children are born into a world where interactions with digital technology are present from day one. Naturally, today's parents worry about the amount of time their kids spend on phones, computers, and gaming systems. But today's speaker, Jordan Shapiro, an expert on global education and digital technology, says this parental anxiety is outmoded. As a father himself, he shares how technology can create opportunities for parents to mentor and connect with their children. Parenting was my priority. Fatherhood was my identity. First and foremost, I was dad. And that meant I was committed to helping them deal with the difficulty of divorce. I was going to guide them as they became accustomed to their new lives. I was going to mentor them, not only as they learned to accept a changing definition of family, but also an entirely new set of formative experiences. I was going to talk them through this. I was going to hold their hands. I was going to hug them. I was going to offer them my love, my support but they only wanted to play video games. Video games all day long. They would sit on the sofa, thumbs on their controllers, eyes fixed on the screen, shooting, running, jumping. Sounds like a casino, beeping, ringing, buzzing, lights flashing. My kids were enraptured. They were immersed, they were obsessed. And I very quickly recognized that if I were to tell them to stop playing, if I told them to get up off the sofa and come on a hike, to process their feelings about the divorce, they were going to perceive that as punishment. Games were like their security blanket. Home life had become chaotic and confusing, but games had consistent rules. Games were dependable. Games were predictable. I didn't want to take that away from them. So I met my kids where they were. I sat down beside them on the sofa, and I played along. New Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong Country, Daddy became a gamer, and digital play became the new family time. I can see that some of you are cringing. (laughs) Most people react that way at first. Negative, shocked, the new family time. That's absurd, you think. Blasphemous, even. We are so committed to the industrial age concept of the nuclear family that a digital device seems more like a intruder than some kind of a domestic enhancement. Smartphones, laptops, iPads, gaming consoles, these things feel toxic, like a trespasser. They bring what once belonged outside, inside our homes. I'm sure every parent watching this has had this experience, sitting in the living room, trying to get your child's attention, but the kids would rather chat with friends on Discord, swipe through TikTok, post a selfie on Instagram, update the Facebook status. Their minds are out there, but their bodies are in here. And for grown-ups and parents, that's really confusing. What was once kept at arm's reach is now deeply enmeshed in even the most intimate parts of our lives. A digital device in your back pocket, under your pillow, even in the bathroom. There's no respite, no boundaries. There's no longer an easy way to protect your children from the external universe. But I'm here to tell you that that's not necessarily a bad thing. Everything is transforming. And every day, we're forced to confront unfamiliar things. Childhood is one of those things. Childhood is changing. And it's scary, and it's disconcerting. Because it's difficult to figure out how to prepare your kids for a future that you don't understand for a world that you can only barely imagine. But guess what? Nobody's ever been able to predict the future. Every parent has always faced the exact same challenge. You might think we're living at a time of unique revolutionary change, but we're not. Every generation deals with the same thing. We love what's new, but we're terrified of change. We reach out for modernity, as long as it doesn't have too much momentum. We want all the benefits of advancement, but not any of the uncertainty that comes along with it. Take Socrates, for example, that brilliant philosopher of ancient Athens. He practically invented critical thinking, but he was scared of writing. 
He was scared of words on a page. That was his version of technophobia. We sometimes forget that the written word was once cutting-edge technology, an innovation greater and more disruptive than anything we've seen in millennia. The iPhone is nothing compared to the written word. It's not even a contest. And Socrates knew that. He warned us about the dangers of this terrifying alphabet technology. He said, "We're going to ruin our memory." Sound familiar? Today's parents are just like Socrates, resisting a changing world, trying to stop what's new. How do we make sure these things remain relevant and meaningful and applicable to a connected world? How do we preserve the ideas and values that make it possible for humans to live together in community, to build societies and civilizations? This is what we're really talking about. When we talk about social skills, when we talk about collaboration, when we talk about executive function, when we talk about self-regulation, when we're worried about these things, when we worry that digital technology gets in the way of these things, this is what we're worried about losing. Our children need help learning how to live well, learning how to live a good life with the tools of the times. They need to know that tools don't use us; we use them. If life were like a video game, then our job would be to set up our kids to beat the levels that we couldn't beat, to overcome the obstacles that shut us down. We need to pass them the controllers. But first, we need to teach them everything we've learned about how to play the game. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Bratislava, Slovakia. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Bratislava. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leoni. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.